a cantar esta canción con mucho cariño de mi corazón a la República Dominicana, la casa del merengue y la casa de la bachata. Voy a cantar esta canción. Come on, YouTube. How we doing today? Today is May the fifth, also known as Cinco de Mayo. So in honor of Cinco de Mayo, we're gonna have us a Mexican fiesta today. And uh, since my buddy Clarence Glenn, C. Jeezy, my favorite food, Mexican, taught me how to make these enchiladas and tacos, I brought a man with us. We don't have no Mexican, but we got a Blexican. We got a Blexican. That's me, today. a true Blexican. That's how I do it, you know. Straight out the black pot, Blexican. Let's roll with it, Beetle. All right, this is everything we're gonna need to make enchiladas and uh, tacos. We're gonna have beef tacos, chicken tacos, chicken enchiladas, beef enchiladas. This is everything you're gonna need. I'm gonna try to get everything written down for y'all so where y'all can see it. But this is pretty much everything you're gonna need. So hang tight. We're about to get rolling. In honor of Cinco de Mayo. Got me this sombrero so we can cook with today. So as we gonna get going right here, see how long I can tolerate this sombrero on my head and we're gonna get moving, all right? Let's go. You ready? I'm ready, let's roll. I ain't got no hat. You need a sombrero? I need a hat or something. You know how hot it is in Mexico. I, I got this hat for you right there. That's what's up right there. Look, look, look at that, I got the tassels. A true Blexican in the making right here. <laughs> love tacos, I love tacos. Look at that, we breaking right stuff right already. We good though. We about to roll with this. You gonna enjoy this. Let's roll, Beetle. All right, listen. This is what we gonna do. I'm gonna start browning this ground meat. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my vegetables. I'll have you get the vegetables cut okay. up. And then we'll kind of clean off everything when we have a little bit more room and get to cooking. Okay. All right. All right. As you can see, come get a shot in right here. Got our brown, our ground meat going, starting to brown it up a little bit. Listen, if you want good tasting stuff, you gotta get a quality meat. So what we got right here is some ground chuck. We get 80-20, I, I pretty much use 80-20 for everything. It has the right fat content in there for me. You need that fat, you need that flavor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this browning. And as soon as my compadre right here, got it done, you ready? my amigo. You want it two in there or one? Two is good. You want it now? Gets all that cut up, we're gonna brown our onions and bell peppers and our meat woods. Get that browned out real good. Now listen, for my tacos, what I want to do is when I brown this, I almost kind of want to make a little gravy just with the ground meat. And that way it gives it all that flavor in there when we're going to add our uh, taco season. Okay? Ready for my, uh, onions? my onions? Yes, sir. Take what you want. Let's take it all. You can, take, you can put the bed peppers in there. Oh, you want to open Yeah, put it all in there. All right. I'm going to let this put down together. Right here. What's gonna happen is when this, gonna, this grease gonna release, it'll help cook all those onions down, bell peppers down. We don't have to do it separately. We're gonna cook it all together before we add our seasoning in there. All right? While this is cooking, in case y'all didn't know, Captain Kobe got his official seasoning out. Uh, I haven't got it in the stores yet due to this uh, virus thing going on right here, but uh, it won't be long. Bear with me. Now you know we legit. Now you know we're for real. Stay tuned, baby. Y'all gonna love this. This is off the chain, right, Jesus? You convinced me. Off At the first, chain. I was kind of skeptical about it because I had another brand that I was loyal to, but after using that a few times, I said, man, this is some pretty good stuff. So now I continue to use it. Does it preserve the purpose? That's the definition. The fast and easiest way to do chicken is buy it already. I mean, you, you almost can't even buy it that cheap in the store. I mean, a whole chicken is, is, is about $7. This chicken already in the rotisserie cooked up for you is pretty much seven bucks. So it's already cooked. You don't have to do the labor cooking. Buy your rotisserie chicken, 
cut it up, makes fantastic enchiladas and fantastic chicken tacos. shift things over here a little bit and what we want to do is we're going to start preparing for our enchiladas while our meat's still cooking so what we're going to do is we're going to fry these uh, tortillas right here now I like the flour tortillas you can do it with the corn more traditional styles of corn you know Tex-Mex more Mexican style is the corn so since we're doing a Cajun mix right here, I think we're gonna do the flour. I like the flour. Everybody seems to like the flour better. I know your kids are gonna like the flour better. They don't like the corn all that much. I like the flour also, but you can use the corn, the yellow corn or the white corn, whichever you prefer. Corn on corn. Corn is corn, but the flowers come out real good. And as he was saying, the kids love the flour. Right. So. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fry these maybe five, 10 seconds a piece. And he's, you notice he's using coconut oil, but you can use peanut oil, gives it flavor, or you can use olive oil, whichever you prefer to use. Coconut oil is real good for you too. It's, so it's, it takes that heat well. And look, this is a Luana coconut oil. It, it is not the extra virgin coconut oil. If you use that, it's gonna taste like coconut. This does not taste like coconut. But it gives you a good flavor though. It does have a great flavor. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna start frying our tortillas. We let our grease get a little hot. You want your geese to get kind of hot because you don't want your tortillas to say, uh-oh, that goes the alarm, something hot. But let's see if we can fry one of these before it burns. See that how that's doing? Do it like that. You don't leave it long. Do it like that. You turn them over like that. When they start puffing up, you take them out. Like that. You keep putting them in. That ain't us, so we're going to keep burning over here. Everything is getting hot. Back here after we had a little uh, interruption there with a the fire alarm, as you know, we're doing this at the firehouse. We find our tortillas, you put them in the hot grease, and you don't let them start bumming. You only put it in there for about five, two, three seconds on each side, and you flip it. A couple seconds on that side, then you flip it again. You don't want them to get too hard, but then again, you don't want them too soft. So check this out how this is right here, look. Do that, we're going to flip it like that. And look, that ready right there. A little hot. Put it on your plate like that and get you another one. Just keep doing that for a little while. A few seconds. Flip it. Like like Beetle said, you want it what? Pliable? Pliable. Yeah. Pliable. You want to you wanna heat those tortillas up when they soft. If you keep them just like that, it's hard to roll when you're trying to put all your meat and stuff in there. So this makes it a little more pliable, a little bit more flexible. So when you put your meat in and you roll it up, you have a great Enchilada. Yeah, he used that term pliable because he's a carpenter, so he used plywood. I don't know nothing about no carpentry, but I can do a little cooking, you know. But he's a damn good carpenter. He's building everything under the roof right now. See that? I'm gonna burn that cap and pull the season now. Some good stuff right there, guys. Y'all to try that. That's some real good stuff. You know, anybody can switch me from something I've been using a long time to cook. It's got to be a damn good product, I'm telling you. You know, he shocked me with that one. I thought he going to saw wood and nail nails and, and cut up boards. But and fight fires, man. We fight fires. And fight fires. We, that's natural. We do that natural. You, you light it, we'll put it out. You know what the fireman's motto is? I'm going to tell y'all later. That's going to be at the end of the show, our motto. Y'all y'all want to know now. Let me finish these tortillas and we're going to get back to the fireman's motto. Oh, if you want to know the five of my toe, catch it on the next video when Captain Kobe Cook. We're going to put it on there if you're curious to see what our motto is. All right, we're going to check on our meat right here. As you can see, browning up. What I want to do is kind of let this stick a little bit. And once this kind of starts sticking on the bottom, it'll kind of create a little gravy for us. And once that gravy pulls all that flavor out of this meat, that's gonna make one hell of a taco, onion and enchilada. Now come on in here, right here, let me show you a little bit. You can see we got our gravy kind of moving right there. I don't have a lot, but I don't want a lot. I just want a little bit. I don't want this to be overwatered. And what I like to do is, I like the McCormick. If I buy any uh, enchilada mix or taco mix, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix both of these together, taco and enchilada mix. 
Uh, I like the McCormick. Number one, no MSG, and the flavor is just right. It's not over salty. Uh, it's supposed to have all the natural flavors in there. A lot of a lot of the ones you use have a lot of MSG. It enhances the flavors in there way too much, and MSG gives me a headache. So we're just gonna pour this in here. And sometime I'm sure when he used that. It says one pound per meter, one pack, but he used more than that because he throws in more flavor. So it depends on how much flavor you want in your... Right. Dinner. We have six pounds of meat right here, but we have seven packs of right. seasoning. So that's what we're cooking in. So this is how I kind of started out. Just mix it in my meat. And then we're going to add some water in here. taco meat. I'm a taco fanatic. That's why they say I'm a Mexican because I'll eat tacos four or five days a week. You know, sometimes I think I'm from Mexico the way I love to eat tacos or Mexican food. I put taco meat like if he cook it, I'll put it on uh, a salad. I'll make a sandwich. I'll make a tortilla. Whatever you name with taco meat, I can, I can make it with it. That's how much I love it. And his taco meat is excellent. This meat, I like it fine. Everybody see how this meat's kind of real, real? I cook this down to the meat is really, really fine. I don't think tacos have big chunks in there. So when you see a chunk like this, it's just some seasoning. But we usually cook it down. So listen, I want to show y'all something. The biggest deal in this cooking right here, when we're making this taco meat, if you look in here, the meat and the sauce are not the same color. Everybody see that? Meat's a little bit lighter. The sauce is a little more red. It's, this is gonna have to cook. I'm gonna cook this about 30, 45 minutes. And when it's cooked, I'm gonna show y'all, everything's gonna be the same color. That's when you know you have it right. That's when you know the consistency is right. Okay? Color looks good now. You gotta cook, baby. Yeah, I know how yours is. You cook yours. You gotta cook. That's the difference between me and you. You take time and take three hours to cook a taco meat. I cook it in about 30 minutes. And that's why his is so good. I yes, just mix it in there and just roll with it. Chicken there. Yeah? All right. Rotisserie chicken is normally not that seasoned, so in order to make it fantastic, we added a little bit of Captain Corbett's Cajun seasoning on there. Knock it out the park, right? All right. What we're about to do here is mix our enchiladas, make our enchiladas. Uh, we have a certain way that we do these. Uh, actually, Clarence taught me this yes, sir. many moons ago when we were driving together. So, uh, Clarence, let's get started. Let's show them how we do our enchiladas. Okay. Uh, it's very simple. It is a little messy, but it is very simple. It so is messy, it. but it's simple. Okay. And uh, you can take, here, this is your cheese, your chicken. Here's an onion we sprinkle up. You're gonna sprinkle them on the top. You can put onions inside or on the top, however you wanna do it. If you love onions, you can put them in there too, or you can put them on the top, however you wanna do it. People do it different ways. Let's I do like both. do both. I love onions in there and on the top, because I'm an onion fanatic. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna take our first tortilla here. We're gonna dip it in our stuff. I'm gonna turn it here like this. I do both ways. I'm gonna put it like this. I'm gonna take me some chicken. Put a little chicken in there, a little more, you know, so we can roll it. I'm gonna take some cheese. Cheese is very, very plentiful. You wanna use a lot of cheese in that, like that. Gonna get a little onions, just a little bit. Like that, I'm gonna take it. Uh-oh, kinda of slippery there. I'll take mine like this here. Sometimes I'll fold if you can, but if you can't fold, you do it like this here. You fold yours on the end? No, I don't need to know. But sometimes if it's a big one, you can fold it on the end. Like this here, you roll it and then you slide it in the corner like that. Okay. Now listen, you want to have some Pam when you cook sometimes the flour ones they'll stick. So we, we used a little bit of our coconut oil we had left and we kind of uh, buttered the bottom of our pan right there. And listen, when you're making these enchiladas right here, don't worry about putting your fingers in here, yeah. putting your fingers in the yep. uh, cheese and in the onions because what we're going to do at the end, we're going to take all this meat, all this cheese, all these onions and put them on top anyway. So they're all going back in this pan. So don't worry about getting everything messy. We're gonna, we're gonna use everything we have right here in this thing, right? You just put them right there together and you keep going like that. You Good. keep rolling, baby. Take you a little time to do it, but once you get through with them, hmm, mm, good. 
By the time it's all said and done today, we're gonna have over 40 enchiladas and over 40 tacos. And we have, uh, I think 13 people coming in today. Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. That ain't Cinco de Mayo, that's Cinco de Tretin, whatever you call it. No, it's Cinco de Mayo today. Yeah, I know, but you said 13 people. You oh, got 13 people, 13 minus five. Well, we're having the fiesta with 13. Okay, okay, we got some Mexican coming? Just you. I'm the only Mexican here today, that's okay. <laughs> si, senor. <laughs> People smell it coming. Got trucks coming from all over this district. I told you, when I start cooking, you can smell that all the way down more field. All right, what we're gonna do here, now that we have all our enchiladas all made, we took the rest of our stuff right there, we put it in here, and what we wanna do, we wanna take this sauce, and I wanna kinda feed it right here, and almost in between every enchilada, right? So we get that sauce in there. So Clarence, go ahead and use the rest of what we have right here. Okay, go ahead, you can do it in there. It's like this. Okay. And what we have left in this can, just gonna fill it up. Keep that flavor in there. Keep it from drying mm -hmm. out too. All right. All right. Okay. And for the final product right here, douse it with cheese. Drown. Just drown it with cheese. That's what makes them delicious, the cheese. Look at that. Mm-mm-mm. You ain't got to go to Mexico to get this. You can get it straight here at station number nine. That's right. Captain Kobe, cook it. Right off the bat, boy. Look, we have a little bit left. We got plenty of cheese, eh? Plenty? Okay, plenty. good. Beef, too. Look at that. That's pretty, huh? That is pretty. All right, we're going to prep this to get in the oven in just a minute. All right. Remember what I talked about earlier. We've been at this probably about 45 minutes. Look at the meat. Everything's consistent. Everything looks the same color. And look, this meat right here, there's not a lot of grease in it. It's a good mix, right? You want a little grease for the flavor, but you don't want your tacos to be all greasy and everything either. So when we're looking at our meat, it should be consistent all the way through. And that's what we have right here. Okay? So now we're gonna take some of this, get our enchiladas going, our beef enchiladas going, and get ready to eat. All right, me and Clarence went ahead and switched spots right here, so. These are a little different, these are a little hot. So he's gonna go ahead and pour that meat on there, All right? Finishing touches, we got a cheese right here. We got a little CG's here. Come on. Dock us up. Man. It's messy. Yeah, it's messy. But you know but what? It's worth it. Ain't nothing like a lot of cheese, because it ain't easy being cheesy or CG's. That's how we're going to do it. Look at that. These things are fresh out the market right here, baby. You can't go to Mexico and get these here. This is straight out of Captain Kobe's kitchen. That's right, man. Remember that. Mexican, Mexican, Mexican. A little bit more right here. Though. All right. Ooh, it's gonna be good. Yes, indeed. Woo! Mexican, huh? Let's take that and get that in the oven, and then we're gonna pick up right here. All right. What we're gonna do to top this meal off is we're gonna have us a little side. A little side of refried beans. 
All right? We're gonna get this cooking. Once it gets heated up, we're gonna add our onions. It needs Captain Colby bad, it's very bland. <laughs> All right? And uh, some cheese and a little sauce. We make our own little blend of refried beans, right? We're gonna spice it up. Right, G? That's right. <laughs> All right, now that we got this loosened up right here, let's get a shot in, in this right here, all right? We're gonna dock it up a little bit. Number one, number one main ingredient, Captain Cold. You know what? Don't be scared either, all right? Don't be scared to put it. Number two, gotta have onions. Gotta have them. Number three, cheese to thicken up. Number four, Now we got this all mixed up, all heated up, all ready to go. We'll take our last bit of this cheese. We're gonna leave it on top. We're gonna let it melt on top. Have that done. And that's it. Taco meat's ready, enchiladas in the oven. Beans ready. All we got left to do is take care of our hard tacos. Show you how to do that. I'm gonna show a quick, easy trick on hard tacos. We're gonna be ready to eat shortly, baby. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook our hard tacos. I'm gonna show you a little trick. If you put them in a pan and they get heated up, they usually close on you. So a good way is just put them on a rack. Let them hang like that. <laughs> and it's all right if you got a smoky oven. That's what we do, right? We smoke it on up, man. Five minutes used to that. We good with that. And we just put them on top like this. Alright? Let these cook up. We're gonna be eating soon, baby. We're gonna be eating soon. Look at these enchiladas. Don't that look awesome? Told you. Told you, Cajun mix, baby. Cajun mix right there. Made by a Cajun mix and a Blexican. And a Blexican, that's right. <laughs>